Hello everybody, good day to you all today. I am talking about Descendants, number three. This is the final of the movies, this is the, of the trilogy. This, this one comes to an end, everything comes full circle. And this movie directed by Kenny Ortega, after starring in it are Dove Cameron, Mitchell Hope, Dan Payne, um, Keegan Connor Tracy, um, Sienna Jackson, um, Sophie, Sophia Carson, Cameron Boyce, um, Boo Boo Stewart, China and McLean, maybe others to the cast. In this movie here, you have Mel and you have Ben. Mel proposes, I mean, no, Ben proposes to Mel. They're going to get married. They're going to be the future king and queen. When, once, once, their, once, his, once Ben's parents um, step aside, they will, they will take over as the king and queen. And the thing is, though, you have Mel... Played by Dove Cameron, coming from the uh, from the other side with the villains, but now she's over here, and her and she and her job is supposed to like help bridge the gap because a lot of people over on the other side aren't bad. Not because they, they grew up over there and their parents did a lot of bad things. Not because they, they, their kids, their descendants are, are evil. They just put in a bad situation. They just grew up in a bad place, and so now you with, with the help of Mel and and Ben, they're gonna try to give the people another shot, another chance, and people say, hey. You're not bad, and you and you you deserve to be loved and like everybody else. And just because you grew up in 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 in, in the good side of town doesn't mean you you are necessarily all that good either. So you're seeing people trying to understand one another, um, learn how to live together, and and, and live, live in perfect harmony, and, and pretty much forgive each other from past sins. That sounds beautiful. And along the way, they learn a lot of life lessons along the way. People come together, families come together. Um, Things get to uh, people, truths come out. A nice, sweet story. Now, before I get into any further, I'm letting you know right now there's going to be some spoilers. Because things happen in this movie that I don't know how to, I'm not going to, I can't, I don't know how to hide or not talk about without talking about the story. So it's, it's, it's very important. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, check it out first, check out the movie first, and then come back. But right now, there's, there's going to be some spoilers. So now before, now, before I get into the good stuff, let's start off with the bad. The bad part is, yes, you, this, this, it can be a little bit cheesy at times. And yes, you kind of know where the story is going to go. You can figure it out pretty quickly. But, it doesn't take away your joy of the movie. You still have, have, have a whole lot of fun watching it. So that's not the, really the problem. The problem is, things get revealed in this, in, this, um, in this movie that don't really get explored. They just drop bombs at you, and you just gotta go with them. They just, they, just, they just say, "Oh, that's it," and then move, they move on to the next one. Like this. But what about? But what about? Like for the first bomb they you had them drop is um, Mel. Now we find that we find out in this, in this movie right here. We know where her mother is, but we never knew who her father was. And now we find out her father is Hades, the Lord of the Underworld, which means she connected to Hercules, Zeus, and all this stuff. She is part of the pantheon of the gods. So technically, she is like a god herself or a demigoddess or something. But the thing is, though, in this movie here, Hades is talking about he used to be a god. Now, I don't know that what that means exactly. Does that mean he used to be all-powerful and he lost it? How? What happened? Why he's not in the underworld? What happened to all those souls in the underworld now? Are they, are they the Roman free? Like, where, where's Zeus in all this situation? Why does he have all this power like he used to be? Like, see, I, and then that you find out about Mel, her connection, and her fa family lineage. He says, she's extremely powerful. But they don't really touch on that or explore it. They just drop that bomb and say, that's her dad. He says, what? And so now, I, I kept thinking about Hercules and Zeus and Poseidon. And, I, and then I started thinking about um, Uma, who's played by China, um, China McClane. And, and, and Uma is connected to Triton, and Triton is supposed to be like the son of Poseidon, so that did I make her a demigoddess too? I just, I, all this stuff in my, my mind just kept rushing, but, but they never explored it. So I just, they just dropped the bomb and, and then go nowhere. I just, oh, okay. Another thing that happens is, okay, now you have Ben. Ben's dad was the Beast in the original Beauty and the Beast story, okay? And he's supposed to be cured of this. But then he has a moment where he confront, pretty much like confronting um, Hades. And Hades calls him the beast. And he growls at him. What does that mean? Does he, that, can, he, can he transform into the beast when he wants to? Or not? Does he have that kind of power? Because he's stepping up to a god. Or maybe he's not a god anymore. Like again, they don't explore it. So I don't really know for sure if he, like he used to be a god or he's not a god anymore. Or is he still a god? Or doesn't have the same powers anymore? I, I, don't, I don't know. 
And then when he growls at him, I come thinking, what can he do? Can he transform into a beast again when, when he wants to? I, I don't, I don't know. Cause then you have Ben, he gets transformed into a beast by the curse, and then he gets cured of that. But then he, he but the thing is though, he still has fangs and he still has a beard. He says he still has some beastly features to him. So I said, okay, that's fine. But and then, so I'm thinking that's how he's going to be now for forever. And then he gets turned to stone, and then he gets free from stone. The beard's gone, the fangs are gone. Like the, what? What happened? Like did the other curse cure the other curse? Again, they drop a bomb. Don't really explore it. So it's just, I don't know what happened there. So so the curse, other the stone curse, cured the regular curse that caused them to come to the beast in the first place. I oh, okay. Yeah. And then you have the, the other thing that, that kind of gave me a little bit of a problem. Okay, now you have Audrey, who's played by Sarah Jeffrey. And Audrey is the, the, the uh, descendant of um, Sleeping Beauty, right? And she has been groomed all her life that she's going to marry um, ben. She had been, ben, ben, ben. Her and Ben were a couple. They were on the fast track to become the next king and, king and queen. And then Mel comes in and takes her place. And she's feeling a little salty about that. So now she's, she, she, she's trying to get revenge on everybody because she's, cause she's, cause her feelings are hurt. Now, she has no magical powers. None that I know of. Neither did her mom. And then all of a sudden she gets the staff and she doesn't know how to use it without any training or know-how at all. I just... How... Oh, okay. I mean, it was cool watching her use her powers. Fine. But how does she know how to use them? Now you have Mel who comes from magic. Her mom is Maleficent and her dad's Hades. So, okay, she isn't her blood that doesn't know how to use this kind of magical abilities and the gifts. And she grew up around her mom. So, so she her mom told us some things how to use magic. But um, Uma, I'm not Uma, Audrey never grew up around magic. So how does she learn how to use the stuff? Yeah, that part kind of bothered me. I, just, I said, oh, okay, fine, whatever. And then you have the ending. Now, now I understand that now the end thing is they, they they finally close the portal portal down from the other side, open up the bridge so they can pass through, so they, so they can probably mend fences and stuff like that to, to come together perfect army. Great, fantastic, beautiful. But the thing is though, now I get the kids, but a lot of the adults were still bad. So are they just automatically good now because the bridge appeared? I mean, and if, and, if, and, if, and if they're giving all the other adults another chance and a shot to come back into this world, what about Mel's mom, Maleficent? Are they going to unlizard her and make her become part of the group too? Maybe? Like I said, they drop bombs in this thing and they don't explore it or go anything with it. So now you're just stuck with all these questions like this. What? 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 Yeah. But at the same time, I still enjoyed the movie. So let's move on to the good stuff. The good part is the singing and the songs is always amazing. And the dancing is always fantastic. And I do like, love these characters and I love, I love the, how they have evolved and grown and changed to this present point in time right here. And you actually you can see them go through this whole, um, this whole thing, this whole like circle of life, I guess you could say. And I, and I really did enjoy that. It has, a, it has a nice sweet message to it as well that, that I did enjoy. It has, some nice, it has some sweet moments in here, some funny moments in here that I liked. So, overall, it's a fun film. It is fun, and I and I have a whole lot. You have a whole lot of fun watching these movies, because I, I, I know I sure do. Even though it has some parts in there, like I said previously, that was like, what? I, cause you, like, the, cause I, I'm still, I still can't get over the whole thing with the her, my mom, dad being freaking Hades. Like, what does that? I mean, she, she's not a human being anymore. She's a god. Isn't she? Because whatever, like Maleficent is not human, so she's like what is she like a fairy or something like that, or a dark fairy maybe, or a witch or a sorcerer. I'm not sure what Maleficent is, but she's not human and she's very very powerful. And so Hades, he's part of the the the, the three because it's Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades. They're, they're the top. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. But either way, now that I would like to see that explored, but they didn't go that way. It, it, it movie ended, so I just, 
I mean, yes, it, 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 they managed to bend, bend fences between one and each other in, in the movie. I mean, at first they were like, um, she didn't like, she didn't like him. And but the thing though, you can tell you can tell he still he cared about her, but he wasn't like trying to be a part of her life. And then you see them like working together, sort of like in the end. So there's something it's, 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 it's representing like a start of them coming back together as a family. This is great. They didn't talk about her mom at all, so they just forgot about her, I guess. So well, they, 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 they didn't mention her, but the, but the thing is though, if she could forgive her dad, can she forgive her mom too? That's another thing. So but we'll, we'll see. Overall, like I said, it's a fun movie. I did enjoy it. So I guess it's going to be a great. I'm giving it a B minus. Don't see my word for it. Go check it out for yourself. Hopefully, when you watch it, you will enjoy having fun watching it too. So give my channel a like, hit the thumbs up, shaboo, and subscribe to my channel and share. I would appreciate it. Like I always say, in my dream in my life, I am the Ninja Rabbit. Uh, peace out, uh, people.